More Sydney property FOMO. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. I'm Florian Heiser, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I hope you've had a good start to the weekend. I've got my morning stein of coffee, and I thought we'd start the day by having a look at a few articles that were talking about the impending boom in the Sydney property market. Guys, the impending boom. Or as I would say, more FOMO. More fear of missing out. More fuel on the emotional fire to get people to recklessly jump into the housing market because interest rates are so low and they're never going up property just boobs except for that little bit that went down don't worry about it guys it'll all be good you can trust core logic you can trust domain you can trust this guy so sydney home price is on track to record biggest monthly increase in more than four years does it feel like the economy is driving this you know Home prices are on the verge of the biggest monthly increase in more than four years as Sydney's nascent housing boom slams into a higher gear. Nascent housing boom. Okay. Guys, if you're not familiar with the concept of a dead cat bounce, it's called, you know, booming market, decline down, then it bounces back up again. What are the fundamentals driving this? Pulling up this market? That's the question that I'm putting to you. Let me know in the comments if you have a solution because I can't see it. Preliminary data released by research group CoreLogic revealed that the median price of a home increased 2.5% for the first 28 days of October, representing a jump of around $20,000. The rapid growth came on the back of three months of prior increases, including a 1.7% climb in prices over October and another 1.7% increase over September. CoreLogic will publish its full monthly results on Monday, but the early data suggests Sydney's median home prices would finish the month 7% higher than it was at the start of August. Now, I recently wrote an article, well, yesterday I wrote an article about the fake auction clearance rates exposed, where we looked at the data from Domain and just broke pulled apart the actual undisclosed results and found that their claims of auction clearance rates are trending a lot higher than reality or are, are published higher than they actually are and i'm calling on everyone to be skeptical of any of these claims that are being put forward because i mean here's an example when you when they're advertising a rate they should have the worst case and the best case scenario the range of where that rate could possibly sit based on the data they don't have available but they don't publish that because that either takes a little bit more effort or it goes against the narrative that things are going fantastic things are going fantastic so have a read of that article and please share it with your friends so, because i mean you don't want you don't want people you care about to be honestly swept up in a bunch of FOMO media reporting and hype and make a reckless decision. You want people to take their time to make a decision, you know, slowly, having thought everything through. You don't want them appearing on a current affair going, Oh, I was tricked by such and such and, and we need more regulation. You know, because that, that's where it'll all end, won't it? So it'll also be the fastest monthly growth in prices since May twenty fifteen. When the housing market was in the throes of the last housing boom now let's jump back let's jump back to one of my favorite charts one of my favorite charts thumbs up if you want this on a coffee mark <laughs> i have to I, I gotta go to the source anyway but you can see here 2014 15 see the black line that is foreign investment into the housing sector of as a share of building approvals see that number there that's a hundred percent just just look at that that is something that will be driving a boom. It was a boom, influx of money from overseas investors. And as an architect, I saw it. I was talking to, to clients who were trying to get projects off the ground. 100% funding from China. So that's, and look at that decline. What is driving that up? Okay, we've got Hong Kong issues. And I'll be looking at, I read another article where mango exports were hit uh, in decline because of the, the unrest in Hong Kong. You've got a few people that are, flooding out of that the little city there and a lot of them are at the upper echelons of society they've got enough money that they can just get the money out of there however they can 
So that's affecting the higher end of the market. Is that going to flow through to the plebeian houses, to the normal working class houses, to the stuff that's exactly the same as everyone else in the suburb? Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. So let's jump back here and have a look. That boom prompted financial regulators to intervene with the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority putting in place a stringent lending, lending requirements for banks that eventually helped cool the market. CoreLogic head of research, Tim Lawless, said the recent growth in prices was the result of regulators relaxing many of those stringent requirements along with interest rate cuts. Okay, so yesterday I read an article, people calling for more regulation on lending to small businesses because people were getting burned by it. Now we've got APRA imposing more regulations in it. Oh, when they want to stimulate the market again, they remove the regulations. So, and then we're hearing conflicting things. Well, no, the regulations didn't slow down the market at the moment. So there you go. There's a few things to, a few things to consider, a few conflicting bits of information, guys. So mortgage rates are cheap, cheaper. That's driving by demand, Mr. Lawless said. The same conditions were also pushing up prices in other capitals, including Melbourne, with the city median price increased by 1.9% over the first 28 days for November. And you have to remember, this is all based on their, their hedonistic, uh, that's what I'm going to call it, uh, methodology, where they break apart all the aspects of a property and stick it all together to say that's the value of it. I, I, I've said in previous videos, I think it's just because of the gregarious nature of the real estate profession. Uh, if they're just you know, seeking joy above all else. We'll look at some eudynamia. So, there was also growth in the Perth market for the first time since 2018, which showed the market was turning a corner, according to Mr. Lawless. Well, there was definitely growth in the Perth market, and a lot of that was growth in houses in arrears, or in mortgages in arrears, over 180 days. So, yeah, it's a big thing to consider, guys. Western Australian real estate had been in a five-year slump following the end of the mining construction boom. I mean, remember all the real estate agents that went up to, um, oh, what is it, Warrenbar and all these other towns in the middle of nowhere, bought up all these houses, these geniuses in the, in the industry at the peak of a construction boom. Construction doesn't last. Construction doesn't last, guys. You know, I, I, I know, <laughs> we, we got advantages from the construction rooms just when we started our business in mining. So yes. And while cheap credit was stimulating other capitals, Sydney prices were growing the fastest because there was not enough housing supply to match rampant by demand, Mr. Lauder said, revealing nearly a quarter fewer homes were for sale than a year ago. So people aren't putting their stock on the market. Maybe that's because consumer sentiment is heading down or employment is heading at least in the construction industry what's that what's how's that going to flow through to sydney as well it's another thing to consider there are more buyers but listings are decreasing he said adding this was creating a sense of urgency amongst house hunters there's that fomo and encouraging many to bid up prices this environment would only be eased, sorry, would only ease by the February or March next year. It's a great time to be selling at the moment, but it will take a while for sellers to respond. You need the confidence to sell, find an agent and start an ad campaign. So here we go, more, more FOMO, I would say, more encouragement to get people to leap back into the market guys what do you think do you think this is a legitimate push up in housing this increase what are the fundamentals that are pushing it up what are the fundamentals we saw you know in in another i mean car sales are down guys consumer confidence is down building approvals is heading down we had a slight tick up you know home loan arrears rates are going up Guys, where's where's the good news? You no know, wage growth. Psh, psh, I, yeah, look, look at that chart. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's nowhere. Foreign investment has tumbled. GDP growth isn't doing too well. I need to find some additional data for this. But our predictions for next year 
You know, RBI are making predictions. Westpac are not agreeing with them. RBI are really good at their predictions. So guys, let me know your take on this. Do you think it's just FOMO? Do you think it's really happening? If it's really happening, what are the fundamental reasons that it's happening? Other than, you know, just... Because if all it is, is just reduced supply, easier lending, and um, easier access to, to money, is that actually going to facilitate an increased growth? How much energy is in the sector, in the people, to make those purchases? We don't have a foreign influx of money coming in. To sustain this, we've got a lot of sectors in our in the economy that are slowing down, and that will flow through. That's my concern. If we had, okay, retail sales are through the roof. Construction is booming. You know, mining is going up. If we had all of these, these things as well as as the easier access to finance, then I'd say, okay, there's some fundamentals there that are lifting it up and I could understand it. But I can't understand the argument that this is going to continue on. If I'm wrong, guys, let me know. Please put another argument to me. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it in the comments. So guys, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy my content, want to help us produce more of this type of work and other things we produce, we have a Patreon where you can make a small donation. I also have Amazon and eBay affiliate links where you can make a purchase and I receive a commission that doesn't cost you a cent. And thank you to all the people that used it for Black Friday. I, I just noticed an uptick. I'm going to read for what's happening. And I realized, oh, wait, it's the Black Friday American selling holiday that's appeared here in Australia. And we actually, we did our part for the economy. We did our part. We went and bought a washing machine. The last one we had was from when I was single moving out got the cheapest one i could buy and now with no child number five on the way we've got to upgrade for a new machine rachel said oh maybe it's time and i've been pushing and going to buy a new one for years but so we're doing our part guys we're doing our part for the economy and finally we also have merchandise on heiser says our pocket square range that we're making here in brisbane well making on the other side of the house in a literal queensland sweatshop authentic and PayPal and Ethereum if you'd like to make a donation that way. We also have people making direct deposits and thank you very much to the, to the generous donation of one of our newest patrons. I really appreciate your help. Take care everyone. Have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.